Ostensibly, culture and shadows are as old as Methuselah. The differing and sometimes conflicting views of this narrative is that it is just what is meant by culture and shadows. At the outset, this positive theory, culture and shadows, appeared to be an essential part of conflict and conflict resolution. A close-up detailed view shows that culture and shadows are delicate and precise and too difficult to analyze, but they are intertwined. And there is no denying the fact that they are everywhere, according to Carl Jung. Everyone carries a shadow. Everyone has a culture, and the less shadow is embodied in the individual's conscious life the blacker and denser, according to Carl Jung. My analysis of Carl Jung's theory suggests that there seems to be a symbiotic relationship existing between culture and shadows, and they are everywhere. Everyone carries a shadow, and the less they are embodied in the individual's conscious life, the blacker and denser it is. Culture and shadows combine, make them inseparably linked. And if culture and shadows go unnoticed, this is contingent on our cognition and cognitive lens. The aforesaid information is explicit and implicit. Hence, the same implicates culture and shadows. They are inextricably linked, and whether culture and shadows go unnoticed or not are contingent on our cognition and cognitive lens. As an author, student of film, media art specialist, licensed cultural practitioner and publisher, culture and shadows are not only a cliché, but perceived as normal according to Alexander Kiefes, Normal is one of those words that seem not to need a definition. Its meaning appears self-evident. The aforesaid clarification establishes context. It sets the tone and tenor for this discourse and does not conflate this issue concerning shadows, but provides an extreme close-up frame cited by dictionary.com. Shadows impute a dominant or pervasive threat, influence or atmosphere, especially one causing gloom, fear, doubt, or that light. They live under the shadow of war, an inseparable companion. The dog was his shadow, a person who follows another in order to keep watch upon that person as a spy or detective. This literary text and academic conversation underscores shadows as important historically because they provide early evidence that light travels in straight lines. For example, humans constantly but unconsciously use shadows to judge the shape of objects in their environment. Moreover, Shadows reveal much about an object's extension in space. They are often used to heighten the illusion of depth in a painting. The irony of this discourse is that the deeds which shock humanity, but rather the words describing them, according to Reinhard Kolesi, is making the point that apart from the stoic point in this context, as global citizens, we should not allow ourselves to be disturbed by words. The contrast between pragmata and dogmata have aspects other than epithetus. Normal dictum indicates. And therefore, it draws our attention. The autonomous power of words without whose use or human actions and passions could hardly be experienced and certainly not intelligible to others. In view of the aforesaid enlightenment, 
through my cognitive lens as an author and licensed cultural practitioner, I perceive shadows as Cass, Cass, and self are intricately linked. It should be noted that Cass has connotations and is pronounced just like Cass. Correspondingly, the difference, for example, a Cass is a stratified group of people in society who often intermarry and carry only take certain occupations. On the other hand, caste can connote a number of things. Put in this context, it is applied as choin to shaping an object and or to a group of actors. Self, in this context, can also be interpreted as culture since it helps define how individuals see themselves and how they relate to others. A family's cultural values shape the development of its child's self-concept. Culture invariably shapes how we each see ourselves and others. For example, some cultures prefer children to be quiet and respectfully when around adults. In another space, the development of one's mind or capacities through one's own efforts. Self-cultivation. Margaret Fuller, I quote, believe that her purpose as literary editor of the New York Herald Tribune in the early 1840s was to promote reading as a form of self-culture and self-knowledge, end quote. It is noted that in this setting, embracing these positions within a philosophical context draws our attention to according most shadows made by a single light source actually do have two parts the dot you can also get two separate shadows from one light source if you have two different objects to create them but no if you only have the one light source and one object you can't get more than one separate shadow a view espoused by physics.illinois.edu everyone carries a dark side even if we don't like to admit it Shadow work can sound scary, and some parts of it may be rather uncomfortable, but it is necessary work to uncover true joy and peace in life. It's sort of like Star Wars. If we let our dark side run rampant and uncontrolled, our lives will feel chaotic. This can manifest as issues with mental health, diseases, feelings of low self-worth, addictions, scarcity mindset, and other mind-body health issues that can affect overall quality of life. Our shadow self often harms our life in ways that are unconscious to us at the time, as a habitual reaction to particular places, people, or things. Our shadow self blocks us from acting for our own greatest good and can prevent us from reaching our true potential in life. The idea of the shadow self was first conceived by Carl Jung, a 20th century psychologist from Switzerland. In his field of psychology, often referred to as Jungian psychology, the word shadow refers to hidden parts of our being. This may be parts of ourselves we try to repress because they make us feel sad or wounded. This is the side that we don't show society, such as when we are at work or school. It can also indicate how we internally perceive ourselves as being weak or in pain, that we feel the need to hide these parts of ourselves. Carl Jung believed in the integration of the shadow side so that our full self is acknowledged and we can live in a balanced way. A shadow is a darkness cast by an object blocking the light. If there was no light, then there could be no shadows, for there would be no source from which the shadow may be cast. Unless there was some light, it cannot be blocked. A shadow is nothing more than the blocking of light. While the word cast can refer to a number of things, in this context, it is applied to trying to shape in an object or to a group of actors. Moving cast shadows are a major concern in today's 
performance from broad range of many vision-based surveillance applications because the highly difficult the object classification task. Several shadow detection methods have been reported in the literature during the last years. They are mainly divided into two domains, a view espoused by Ariel Amato, Ivan Hureta, Mikhail Mozero, and Jordi Gonzalez. I decided to analyze on notice since it is part of the conversation. Shadows are everywhere, but are often go unnoticed. Unnoticed imputes that if something happens or passes unnoticed, it is not seen or noticed by anyone. To put it more succinctly, if culture goes unnoticed, plausibly, culture is in some ways like an iceberg. Just as an iceberg has a visible section above the waterline and a larger invisible section below the waterline, so culture has some aspects that are easy seen and others that are very subtle and difficult to see and understand. Again, devoid of culture, people would turn out to be animals, moving along and doing things based on the animal instinct, which transcends them biologically. This line of reasoning has an explicitness and implicitness because culture has an intrinsic value. It provides important social and economic benefits with improved learning and health, increased tolerance and opportunities to come together with others. Culture enhances our quality of life and increases overall well-being for both individuals and communities. Shadows are important historically for they provide early evidence that light travels in straight lines. Humans constantly, but unconsciously, use shadows to judge the shape of objects in their environment. It is ironic that despite the power that culture has given us, we are totally natural selection, could alter our bodies to adapt to the environmental. Culture is by far our primary method for adapting to the environment today. Culture allowed our ancestors to thrive and spread into new areas. Shadows reveal much about an object's extension in space. They are often used to heighten the illusion of depth in a painting. A shadow is simply a region of space where light should fall, but it does not or does so to a lesser extent because of the intervention of a localized object or material. A single cross-section of the shadow region, such as on a wall, is a two-dimensional entity and has no depth. For example, Filnor relies heavily on low-key lighting to create an uncanny atmosphere. This is when there is a light ratio of key light to fill light, resulting in vivid contrast and strong black shadows. As director and academic Robert G. Nolf put it, Filnor has a distinct style with shadow fill low-key lighting since it is established that a shadow is a dark, real image area where light from a light source is blocked by an opaque object. Yet it occupies all of the three-dimensional volume behind an object with light in front of it. Not to mention, the cross-section of a shadow is a two-dimensional silhouette or a reverse projection of the object blocking the light. A shadow occupies a three-dimensional volume of space, but this is usually not visible until it projects onto a reflective surface. It, for example, a light fog, mist, or dust cloud can reveal the 3D presence. Fog shadows may look odd to viewers who are not used to seeing shadows in three dimension. A thin fog is just dense enough to be illuminated by the light that passes through the gaps in a structure or in a tree. As a result, the path of an object's shadow through the fog becomes visible as a darkened volume. In a sense, these shadow lanes are the inverse of crepuscular rays caused by beams of light. They are caused by the shadows of solid objects.
The sun casts shadows that change dramatically through the day. Earth's shadow, or Earth's shadow, is the shadow that Earth itself casts through the atmosphere and into outer space toward the antisolar point. During the twilight period, both early dusk and late dawn, the shadow's visible fringe, sometimes called the dark segment or twilight wedge, appears as a dark and diffused band just above the horizon, most distinct when the sky is clear. The Shadow Cabinet or Shadow Ministry is a feature of the Westminster system of government. It consists of a senior group of opposition spokespeople who, under the leadership of the Leader of the Opposition, form an alternative cabinet to that of the government and whose members shadow or mirror the positions of each individual member of cabinet. Shadow mapping or shadowing projection is a process by which shadows are added to 3D computer graphics. This concept was introduced by Lance Williams in 1978 in a paper entitled Casting Curved Shadows or Curved Surfaces. A shadow person, also known as a shadow figure, shadow being or black mass is the perception of a patch of a shadow as a living humanoid figure and interpreted as the presence of a spirit or other entity by believers in the paranormal or supernatural. Shadow play, also known as shadow puppetry, is an ancient form of storytelling and entertainment which uses flat articulated cutout figures, shadow puppets, which are held between a source of light and a transient screen of shrim. Shadow play is popular in various cultures among both children and adults in many countries around the world. More than 20 countries are known to have shadow shown troops. Shadowgraphy is the art of performing a story or show using images made by hand shadows. It can be called cinema in silhouette. Now that I'm cognizant of the fact that flame has no shadow because the flame itself is a source of light. Hence, a shadow is the surface area which is less bright than its surroundings because something is blocking light partially or fully from that area. A shadow is nothing but a darker area and the absence of light. What is equally important apart from the philosophical connotations that light poses, it also is utilized throughout many cultures around the world as both a literal and metaphorical symbol. A view embraced by AWA lighting designers. For example, paintings and murals in all cultures of the world show how artists have used light and shade and color to illustrate mood and create atmosphere. Modern technological possibilities allow artists to use light in new ways in entertainment and performance, and large-scale lighting installations can dramatically highlight the beauty of architecture. By the same token, an object's self-shadow is known as self-shadow and the other is cast shadow. That's why distinguishing between these types of shadows are very essential for identification of objects and also for removal of cast shadows when it comes to the case of self-shadows should be recognized as part of the object of interest and hence it must be preserved. Interestingly enough, both cast and self-shadow have different brightness value. For example, shadow's brightness depends upon the reflectivity of object of which they are cast as well as their illumination from other sources. While self-shadow has more brightness than cast shadow because they get more light from surrounding illuminated objects, in this context, self can be interpreted as culture since it provides illumination. Remember, a family's cultural values shape the development of its child self-concept. As a consequence, this metaphoric picture of culture shapes how we each see ourselves and others. Now that the proverbial dust is settled, ostensibly, the differing and sometimes conflicting views as to just what is meant by culture and shadows, culture and shadows are an essential part of conflict 
and conflict resolution. Culture and shadows are inextricably linked. There is a nexus between them. They are everywhere. Everyone carries a shadow, according to Carl Jung. The less shadow is embodied in the individual's conscious life. The blacker and denser it is, according to Carl Jung. As global citizens, we must be cognizant of the fact that if culture and shadows go unnoticed, this is contingent on our cognition and cognitive lens. Finally, this positive theory, culture and shadows, are as old as Methuselah. The differing and sometimes conflicting views of this narrative is that it is just what is meant by culture and shadows. The same was analyzed through the lens of an author, media arts specialist, licensed cultural practitioner, and publisher. It was also captured in 31,166 words, nine chapters, and framed in ISBN 978-976-965798.